Hey guys, welcome to Black Is United. Welcome to another video. And today is time to analyze some, you know, some articles, if you can call them that, some opinion pieces, if you can call them that, from Jesus Sanchez, uh, a writer from Marca. I'm gonna put all the links to the articles in the to the two articles I'm gonna be using in the description below if you guys wanna check it out, read it with me, I'm gonna be reading as I go along, the images are gonna be more of the same, so if you guys wanna go ahead and look look them up, uh, links will be in the description below. But without further ado, let's start, and then we'll go ahead and talk about what those articles mean. Sessionism Begins, Poor Morals, by Jesus Sanchez. Kike Setien started life at Barcelona with a 1-0 win over 10-man Granada, which was a win that tasted so very sweet. Supremacism has returned in football, and it's thought that only playing football according to Johan Cruyff's model is valid. Everything else should be refrained from, even if it works. Possession returned to Barcelona as a virtue, and it stood out in their performance. We have returned to counting all of the passes made as if it's better to score a goal after 100 passes. A goal score with just 3 touches is frowned upon. What must Alison Becker and Mohamed Salah think? Officiating was again a point of controversy, but again, we saw that things haven't changed. If a decision hurts us, we speak. If it benefits us, we shut up. BAR returned to baffle us. Barcelona returned to playing, but with a new look and everything looked different. Poor Ernesto Valverde, who returned away from orthodoxy what is a league title worth if it's one playing badly? Arturo Vidal returned to play. He returned as Lionel Messi would have liked. As he decided which is the club unique style. He's the coach. Real Madrid also returned to fight for a title. But don't red radicalize anymore. There's Jose Mourinho for that. Okay, so that is the article discussing... You know, obviously he's talking about the game against Granada. The, you're gonna find this in Marca. Marca apparently is supposed to be, you know, supposed to be impartial. They're they're not gonna be, you know, supposedly they say that they don't favoritize anyone, but that's obviously not true. They're mostly a Madrid-based, you know, site newspaper, if you can call them that. And this is obviously, you know, talking about. Protecting Valverde, talking down to Setien, possession, you know, the, the way of, of Barcelona to play. That's good to know. But let's say what Setien had to say when he was presented as Barcelona coach. And this is going to be, you know, this was also, I also found this in Marca, but this is actually just the words of Hike Setien pretty much word by word. And then we'll go ahead and talk about everything and see what it means. Setien's remarks on the must win philosophy. You have to have a lot of arguments when talking with me. As winning, because you have to win is hard for me to understand, Setien wrote in a column for Marca. Winning is what everyone wants. And there it comes that word. You have to win. You have to win. Even the children at the age of 8 or 10 came to the car window to tell me, you have to win today, huh? You have to win. And of course you want to win. You can... How can I not want to win? I've featured in more than a thousand matches as both coach and player, and it's not that I have no ambition or desire to win, but victory must come as a result of doing things well, especially because I've always thought that a victory is not worth on its, in its own. I think you, have, you work to give continuity to things. There are things you have to do that last in time. They're not, that are not flower of a day that one day you can scare a wonderful goal for the squad, but you have not deserved to win. Setien went on to break down the philosophy he wants his team to follow. I like it when my team plays well most of the time, having the ball, because I know that in this way I will have many chance, many more chances to win than the rivals, he added. 
Sometimes football is unfair, but in the long run, if you do things right, you will have more success than failures. And that is something difficult to understand. This reason is in his mind. People want to see you, your team win. Many do not care about the ways. I care and I will explain this to Real Betis when they hire me. I told them, you know who, how I am, you know what I'm going to do. If you're really not sure about this, it's better to sign another coach. Alright, so, you know, this is basically Setien's, uh, although this this was written by the, what Setien said to Marca was done before this article by Jesus Sanchez. This is pretty much answering that article by by the Mar by the Marca editor. So, what does this mean? Let's go ahead and go back to the article from Jesus Sanchez, Setien soon begins poor morals. And basically what they're saying is that why is it that Barcelona fans only accept one style of play? Because in reality it is true. Like anything that turns away from Cruyffism we pretty much look the other way. Like it's not it's not something that we like to do. If you ask most Barcelona fans, they're gonna tell you that Cruyffism is the only way to do things. And to a point it is true. And it is true only for Barcelona. And only for a club that is that has had all their success based on the Cruyffism. Because if you think before Johan Cruyff, before 1990, and you compare it to Barcelona now, there's no difference. Like there is like no comparison. Barcelona has won so much more in 30 years than what they have won previously. For Barcelona, there's only the way of Johan Cruyff and the model of Johan Cruyff will be valid until Barcelona is 5 to 10 years not winning. When when Barcelona is in, in a period of 5 to 10 years and we are still doing things properly, we have the right coach, we're working with the right mentality, we have the right players to do the project and stuff like that, and we have, let's say, two league titles out of, out of 11, things like that. When, when, when we have those kind of results, okay, then we, then we can th start thinking about changing the model. But the thing is that for Barcelona, it's not that you have to do a hundred passes before you score a goal. No, 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 it's not about that. It's about... The thing about the possession, it's not that it makes the game look pretty, but as you saw yesterday against Granada, even with a Barcelona team that is still on, on development, it's still early stages because Setien hasn't had enough time to work with his team, and I'm sure that the more that he works with his team, the better they will defend, the better they'll move the ball around. When we recover the likes of Frenkie de Jong, Usman Dembele, we're gonna have a better team, obviously. I'm hoping that all, all that happens. But the thing is that even with a team that hasn't been playing like this for a long time, you saw what you saw the big difference, and it, and that it was that we generated a lot more chances than the rival. And the rival barely even had a dangerous chance. They only had one dangerous chance, one truly dangerous chance, that it was a shot that they had to the post. Other than that, Setien, I mean, other than that, Ter Stegen was non-existent. And it's great that Ter Stegen is non-existent. If there's one player that I do not want to see during the game, is my goalkeeper. I want, as much as I love Ter Stegen, I want him to be, you know, you know, as an spectator, just enjoying the the sun, the breeze, like thinking about what he's gonna eat tomorrow like it's it's that's what I want their Stegen to be doing I don't want him to be on the game well I want him to be focused obviously if, if anything happens but I want like you guys know you guys to get the point does that mean that every other style of playing football is not valid that it doesn't work no that's not that's not true at all obviously that for example I love watching Liverpool play I watch I love watching Jurgen Klopp's Borussia Dortmund play. Like I enjoy those kind of teams as well. But the thing is, for Barcelona, for us, the mentality of playing with possession, of generating a lot of chances, of dominating games through possession, that has been the only way of long-term success for the club. And that is what Tatian had to say what, in what he was saying about the remarks on the must-win philosophy, is that of that he, th this team is going to win over a long period of time is going to have more success than failures if we do things right and doing things right is very common sense 
the whole thing about having the possession is just if you have the ball, the opponent doesn't have it. And if the opponent doesn't have the ball, it's very difficult for them to cause you danger. And if every time that they get the ball, they're, they're all parked in their own penalty area, every time that they have to do a counter, they have to run over 65 meters to do so. And that's obviously going to destroy them physically. And that's why you sometimes wa watch Pep Guardiola's Barcelona just, you know, scoring three goals. And after that, the other team didn't know what to do because they, they are so p pushed back, all their energy levels dropped. They see that Barcelona are completely destroying them, even in the minute 70, and then they completely obliterate them like 6 7 nil. Because that's what happens. When Barcelona do things properly, we see the best version of ourselves. And the thing is that they're also mentioning the likes of Messi, that, you know, that is because of Messi, obviously, this is the thing that happens. Every time that Barcelona does something well, it's always because of the players, it's never the coach. For Guardiola, it was Messi, Xavi, Iniesta. For Cruyff, it was Romario, it was uh, Laudrup, it was Kuman. No, it was, it, was never, it, was never, it was never the coach, right? For Luis Enrique, more the same. MSN, Messi, Suarez, Neymar. But the thing is that if you watch those kind of teams, what team that has been successful, that has won trophies, hasn't had big players? Hasn't had notorious big players? Tell me what team doesn't have, hasn't had that. Even an example like Leicester City had the likes of Kante, had the likes of Mares, had the likes of Jamie Vardy. Are they the most elite players in world football? Well, Kante is. Morris and Barty on that on that next step, but but they are great players. So every team in world football has had great players. The Madrid of the Champions League, although they've won them in a weird way, they had the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Benzema, Modric, Kroos, Casemiro, like Bayern Munich. They won trophies. They had the likes of Philipp Lahm, Lewandowski, Müller, Boateng, Hummels, Alaba. Like every team in world football that has had success has had big players that is it's as simple as that there's not that, that's why that's that, that's why you pay the big wages for the big players and there's no shame in the admitting it it's Jurgen Klopp so I, you're telling me that Jurgen Klopp has won the championship that he's been winning and he's been playing like that with the reserves no he hasn't he has been playing with like Sosala with Mane with Firmino Wijnaldu Van Dijk Alisson Trent Alexander Arnold like he's been playing with some of the best players in world football with elite level footballers so this thing of comparing them to the money you spend to the like you know the players that you have every team that is successful has good players like it's it's as simple as that this thing of saying that poor Ernesto Alverde who turned away from orthodoxy well the thing is that yes I and, and, and you know I understand that this complete that you have to understand that this for a Madrid fan it's understandable to do because obviously if I was a Madrid fan I wouldn't want my biggest rival to be be going back to their style that made them want two trebles that made them see the best football in history the best stage of four years the best period of four years Pep Guardiola's period of four years was unbelievable I wouldn't want that for my team obviously like who 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 would want that? No one. If I if if I was the if I had to see my opposing rivals be putting four past me, five past me, six two, three nil, three nil. Like you know, if I had to see so many times myself being humiliated in my stadium and away from home, of course I would like to diminish their impact. Of course, that Real Madrid fans were. And that Real Madrid people were excited with Ernesto Valverde of us keeping in Valverde. Why? Because they see that we were going on a downtrend in, like, that we were going on the down. And it's obvious. It's obvious that they want to keep Valverde. The thing is that they say, yes, we sacked Valverde being leaders and quasi qualifying first on the group in the Champions League. But did you look on how we qualified to the Champions League as first? Against an Inter Milan, who honestly was a little bit disappointing in the second game. To a Borussia Dortmund that we were just lucky to not lose in the first game. And that actually we were kind of pretty bad in defense in the second game. And two games against Slavia Prague. 
that actually we deserve to lose both of those games. Not get four points out of out of this possible six. And in the league, yes, we finished first, technically, because we finished first in points with Madrid in the first return of, of the of La Liga. We both finished on 40 points. Which technically it's, it's been seen throughout history that you normally do more points on the first leg of the La Liga than in the second. So if everything goes like it's supposed to go, Barcelona in theory and Real Madrid in theory should only reach 80 points in La Liga. If you finish with 80 points in La Liga, that is normally not even close to challenging for La Liga title in other seasons. It's worked for Barcelona so far because we've been facing, we have to analyze, yes, we, we've been winning La Liga titles, but how did we win them? Against what teams did we win them? We didn't win it against a Real Madrid that did 90 points. We did it against a Real Madrid that didn't even reach 70 points. A Clarico Madrid that fall, fell off a cliff. So you have to understand that this was not the way. And I'm sorry that I have to explain this and you might be saying, well, it's obvious. Uh, you, you, and, and to you guys, that's great, but this video is especially made for the people that probably the young people that just started watching football or like whoever maybe maybe kind of thinks that hey, this kind of makes sense because I do hear a lot of Barcelona fans just don't just think talking about possession, and the thing is that a lot of Barcelona fans talk about possession, but they don't explain, they don't really understand why the possession is good for Barcelona. They just know that Barcelona norm that possession normally for Barcelona equals titles, and yes, for the most part, possession for Barcelona equals titles. But there, therefore, I've explained why the possession is important. What happens? What the possession is a means, and it's the means to an end. The end is that if you have the possession, you dominate games. If you dominate games, you create a lot of chances, and you can see very little. If you create a lot of chances and can see very little, you tend to win most games. That's as simple as, as it goes. And when you have all of that, and on top of that you have Lionel Messi, the best player of all time, then you start seeing the Barça of Guardiola, the Barça of Luis Enrique, and you start seeing the best teams in world football. When you put Messi, for example, with Argentina, who don't have a project, who don't have a mentality, who don't have a philosophy, then you see that Messi doesn't shine as much, that Argentina does not have a clue of what they're doing and that's why Argentina hasn't won a major tournament. It's not because they're lacking the players because they have great players, it's because they're lacking a mentality, they're lacking a philosophy. And I'm not meaning that Argent I'm not saying, for example, as an Argentina fan, as an Argentina supporter, I don't think Argentina should go on the route of, you know, at least where they at least while they have Messi, they shouldn't go try to go on the route of playing possession style football. Because that takes a long time to build, and Messi doesn't have. We don't have the time with Messi to do that. So the best way for Argentina to go is to be very solid in defense and try to do a four-two-three-one or a four-four-two with Messi leading the counterattacks. I would like Argentina to play possession-style football, but that takes a long time, and you have to do that at base level. The youth level, all youth levels in Argentina should be playing the same way, just like Spain are. But anyways, that's a topic for another video. Um, like I said, it's not it's not that I'm diminishing other styles of play. I like other styles of play. I like watching Liverpool. I like watching Chelsea. This Chelsea side, I like watching it. It's pretty good. Uh, thought that Pochettino's Tottenham when he was at a good level. I like watching it too. Antonio Conte's Chelsea was really good. This Inter Milan is really interesting as well. Like it's not that I don't, I don't that I diminish every other style of play, but at least for Barcelona, possession is a must. That is undisputable. There's no talking about it. So, we I want to start saying that whenever you guys see an attack on Kike, on Kike Setien, at least for now, you have to understand that they're attacking Setien because they don't, they want change. They don't want Barcelona to go down this path because they know that. Going down this path will probably mean that again Real Madrid will be on a second, on a third level, and the Barcelona will be at the top of world football. They didn't want that for Barcelona, obviously, so they're trying to, you know, make. You know, they're trying to do the same thing that they did with 
be like Sir Luis Van Gaal. Van Gaal for me is still a, a magnificent coach. He did a good job at Barcelona. But he was kicked out for other political means. And for other outside means that weren't like properly footballing terms. So yes, it's important to like recognize that Barcelona have won play in a certain way. And that we have succeeded doing things in our own way. So anyways, leave me all your opinions about this topic. Again, all links will be down in the description below. But with us and done, leave me all your opinions in the comment section below. Comment, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one, Blaugranas.